Yes, I'm your host for former Indiana alum, AJ Guyton. And of course, I got a special, special guest with me, former Hoosier alum, superstar at Indiana University. I got head coach recently named in March, head coach Mike Woodson. How you doing, my brother? Good. How are you? Oh, oh shit. Good. Are you looking good? Like you still playing? You still playing did, a little bit? Yeah. Did I lose you? Hold on there. Make sure I get you back. Don't go nowhere. I got you. There we go. Are you there? Yeah, I'm good. Yep, okay, yep. good. You look like you look good, man. You still playing a little bit? You get some shots up? No, those days are long, <laughs> long gone, AJ. I can't do that anymore. Hey, hey what would you think about that shoot machine? I know you want to get on that shoot machine. Oh, the other day, the ball, I, I tried it. It's been a while since I've used one of those machines. And, and hell, I couldn't keep up with the ball coming out. <laughs> <laughs> you had to put that speed on 10, yeah, slow, uh, slow, it, it, slow it down. <laughs> slow it down, man. I know that jumper's still fire, man. And, but I want to talk to you, man. Uh, I, I Obviously, you're a little older than I, but you you are one of the pillars of Indiana. Basketball started early uh, back in the, in the late 70s. But I want to know, from my perspective, man, uh, what, where did, when it all started uh, in your hometown, what was your hometown? How did it? And what was it like uh, growing up in the Woodson household for you? Well, you know, I'm from a big family of 12. And, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't always in the, uh, the, in the, in the house at the same time. Right. Uh, you know, I had nine sisters and, and two other brothers. And, you know, I lost my dad at the age of 13. So, wow. you know, my, my household was was nothing but love, but didn't have much. And, right. um, you know, you could probably say we were poor, but we were, we were poor and plenty of love, man, with one another. Right. And, and, you know, I started playing basketball thanks to my two older brothers. And okay. uh, I started late, you know, as a basketball player, I didn't start playing competitive basketball until the eighth grade, you know, mm -hmm. I was basically shooting hoops on a tree in the backyard. Right. Uh, in my early days and playing with my older brothers that way. But I didn't really start playing competitively until the eighth grade. And then from mm -hmm. that point on, you know, I really started to pursue basketball and things started to happen for me, you know, right. fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, 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 it really, it put me in a position to entice Bob Knight to, right. to come, come to Indianapolis and see me play. So that, that was the, you know, the turning point, I guess, in my early days as a basketball player, because I got a chance to come down here and go to uh, Coach Knight's camp as a junior in high school. And then from that point on, uh, you know, he continued to follow me, and then he eventually offered me a scholarship mm -hmm. uh, to come to Indiana University and play basketball, which was yeah. the greatest thing that probably could have happened to Mike Winston. <laughs> Absolutely. And before we and, and we're getting to that point, I don't want to put this in perspective because I don't think people understand. Like when you say uh, it was twelve people, and you, you raised with twelve in your family, and it was love because you really they don't understand. I didn't realize until probably I was out of college that I actually lived in the projects because it was so, it was so much love coming from my family. It didn't seem like we were poor, you yeah. know? And, and, and the other part of it is, man, put it in perspective how it is to be in the house. I'm sure you were in a two or three, four bedroom home. Well, what was the sleeping well, arrangement? Okay, like? Put it this way. We were in a, we were in a two to three bedroom home, uh, at various times. Um, you know, my dad, you know, bless his heart, man. He just, he worked so hard uh, to take care of his family. I just believe he worked himself to death, you know, trying mm -hmm. to take care of all his kids. And uh, But he left a major impact on my life because all I know is work. You know, yeah. I've, yep. I've worked from the time I was in the seventh grade to, to give my mother half my check every time I got paid. Uh, uh -huh all the way until I got drafted in, in the NBA and then I bought her a home That's after I signed my contract. So, you know, again, you know, the, the beauty about our family was that we were so close. You know, I've lost two sisters and a brother along the way, along with my mother. And, 
uh, we're still close. I'm the only one that's ever left, you know, mm. in the so really for me to be able to circle back AJ and, and be around family that, you know, I've been away for so long Absolutely. over the years and, and to be able to come back and be around friends and family, man, it just, it makes this job so unique and Absolutely. so special for me. So it's going to be a huge Coach Woodson family section. I, I can see yeah. that. Right <laughs> it had to be one of the prerequisites. Hey, man, I need about 20 tickets every game. In this well, section. I don't know if I get that many, but <laughs> right. we'll get a few to get them down here off and on throughout the I, season. I can't wait to see it, man. And so, you know, I, immediately you probably uh, looked at basketball as a way, you know, to get your, not only yourself opportunities in, in education, but to, you know, you know, to be a positive influence on, like you talked about, on your mom and be able to end up buying a house. Well, when you when you got to high school, what was what was the competition like in the 70s, man? What do you remember, remember about competing in high school back in those days? Well, the, the one thing, that's a great question, because the one thing that I remember so vividly is that the talent in Indianapolis was just off the charts, man. Right. You know, everybody thought, well, Mike Woodson's a – going to be a great player, a good player, mm -hmm. however way you wanted to put it. But I always thought there was so much talent better than Mike Woodson. It wasn't even funny. That's how I felt. Right. Right. And, and there was not an area in Indianapolis where you couldn't go get a great pickup game. I mean, right. I'm talking about I was I was playing with the Indiana against the Indiana Pacers as a sophomore in high school. And Ooh. I'm talking about idols like my idol, which was Roger Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. As a kid growing up, but Big Mac, who is who's my my yes, friend sir. today, is I mean when I say we've been close over the years, man, you know our friendship has never wavered. But right. you had Steve Downing, you had mm -hmm. Bob Nedelec, you, uh, you had Freddie Lewis, Billy Kelly, you know all these guys with Mel Daniels, Darnell Hillman. You had all these guys in the gym. And I'm trying to figure out, hell, how I'm going to stay on the floor. Right. I got the opportunity. Right. But, you know, it took, you know, it took some time my sophomore year, but my junior and senior year, I was right in the mix. In terms Good. of, I truly believe it had a lot to do with my development in mm -hmm. the early stages of my career uh, before I actually got an opportunity to, uh, to go to college. So, Mm -hmm. uh, that helped me prepare myself. And then when I got to coach Knight, he just kind of, mm -hmm. along with Bill Smith, Bill Smith, mm -hmm. my high school coach, played a major role in my, my basketball life. And, you know, he was the first to, to kind of get in my, my butt about, mm -hmm. you know, doing the right things on and off the floor. And then it, coach Knight kind of knocked it over the fence once I uh, became an Indiana Hoosier. So, mm -hmm. uh, but those early days, man, you talking about pickup games, it was it was really special. Because hell, if you lost your game, you had to wait two or three games to get to the next one. So you it's gonna be a good hour when yeah. you get back on that floor. <laughs> and um when, and so you, you kind of touched on a little bit with that kind of competition around, man. When did you begin to kind of see your separation from your peers? Like, okay. Do you is a moment? Was there a moment there where you might have, you know, took Big Mac to the hole? You was like, uh oh, I might be, well, might be great. You know, I go all the way back. You know, I, I've been blessed, AJ, as a mm -hmm. player, and you know, and I'm not ashamed to say that because, you know, things started happening to me, you know, as a basketball player so early in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my big, the big turn for me was when I was in the eighth grade. I was 5'9", a little point guard mm -hmm. at school 11. And Wayne Rafford had graduated from 11. So he was a sophomore at Arlington High School and was the leading scorer in the city. So I asked a teammate of mine on my eighth grade team, you know, he came up to me one day and said, Wayne Rafford plays at this court around the corner from where we lived. And I was like, oh, Really? I said, well, take me over to the court. You know, I wanted to see how I fared against Wayne. Right. And, you know, when I got over there, shit, Wayne looked bigger than life. I mean, Wayne was 6'2", you know, probably 185, 90. I mean, was thick, Chisel. man. Chisel. And I'm this little five nine, little runt running around. Yeah. And he and I got it on, you know, one-on-one mm -hmm. we played. 
and I held my own, man. And mm-hmm. I walked away from that match saying, damn, if he's the leading scorer in the city, then I got a shot. I got a chance. Being a player. So from that mm-hmm. point on, the confidence and the juices continue to flow. Mm-hmm. And once I got to high school, things just started rapping. I grew from 5'9 to 6'5. Mm. And and things just rapidly started to happen, you know, in terms of my basketball game. And, right. and sure, I was putting in time. Yeah. Uh, didn't know what time really was. Right. You, you, you just putting was, in work. <laughs> you was putting in work. And, yeah. and then by the time I started playing with the Indiana, against the Indiana Pacers, mm-hmm. you know, I knew then I had a chance to be a a pretty damn good college player. Uh, I just had to get that opportunity to go. And when coach came knocking, you know, I, I answered and, and, you know, he gave me four years of basketball knowledge and, and mentoring me on and off the floor. And I was able to develop as a ball player and, and make it to the next level. What was that first conversation with coach when he came knocking at the door? Did you, well, know, again, did you know you much know, about him at that time? Oh, sure I did. Okay. I mean, I think every kid in the state, mm-hmm. you know, grew up watching Indiana basketball, Purdue, Notre Dame. I mean, yeah. those were the the premier colleges here in the state. And, um, and Indiana was on top, man. You think about that 76 team, yep. the 75 team, you know, they lose one game in two years, man. That's unheard of. Unheard of, right? I truly believe if Scott didn't break his arm, hell, they would be two back to back seasons, no one mm-hmm. beating them. And, Easy, and it's amazing, you know, that record still stands today. You know, there's right. a lot of teams that have been knocking on the door to, to break it, but boy, hey, <laughs> it it's going, still man. it's still here at home at Indiana University. That team exactly. will probably go down as one of the greatest teams exactly. that's ever graced the college floor. So mm-hmm. Uh, but no, when he came knocking, man, I mean, he, you know, the one thing about coach, he was straightforward. You yeah. know, he said, listen, I'm offering you an education. I'm offering you an opportunity to play for one of the greatest division one basketball programs in the country. And uh-huh. I'll get you a summer job. And those three things is basically all I needed to hear because I needed the summer job to be able to give my mother money to survive. Uh-huh. So. Uh, in that regard, you know, I mean, he he fulfilled everything that he he said that day when he came mm-hmm. to the house, and I, hey, I I I I brought in hook, sink, and dry, drown, yeah. and I was like, you know, whatever you say, I'm there, coach. Right. And, you know, I made that commitment, and he made the commitment to me, and it was a great four years. It was a hell of a four year run for me. Absolutely. Did you did you ever consider anywhere else? Did you ever consider yeah. but you know I, I had a I had a <laughs> I had a recruiting trip set up for Purdue. Uh oh. <laughs> and, and when coach found out about the trip, oh, you know, he called me and he says, What are, what you know, what are you doing, man? <laughs> He's like you already told me you coming to India and I'd never been anywhere. That was my my whole get up man i i i went to cincinnati cuz oscar had come to the house along with gail catlett to to recruit me so that was really my first encounter with with a school because i just never been anywhere in it so i wanted to just go get just to see yeah. And knowing I was going to Indiana, right, basically right. I was going to try to have a good time <laughs> <laughs> and do something different. You know? Right, right. And I had, you know, I had this recruiting trip set up with Purdue and coach called. He says, Mike, are you coming? I said, absolutely. I'm coming. But coach, I've never, he says, don't waste those people's time. Oh, he threw that one at you. <laughs> yeah. And he was right. No, yeah, he was right. truly right. And mm-hmm. I, uh, I called down, I think Fred Schaus was the coach there. Mm-hmm. I called down, I said, Coach, I'm not gonna make it. And boy, he was he I know was, he was <laughs> he was better upset, you know, and I felt bad. But you know, like Coach said, well, you know, why am I gonna sit here and and play games with Purdue when I know I'm going to I right. he was right. Yeah. So I canceled, signed at IU and <laughs> 
<laughs> everything else is history. Oh, it's, it's history. <laughs> and that, that's very common. And, and you sit in that chair now, you're going you're gonna to see it. We all, even when I came to Indiana, I already knew. I was like, this is the place for me. I'm just looking for just a small thing to confirm it. And my conversation with Coach Knight was confirmed, but we already know kind of where we want to go before right. we start that whole process. And then I canceled my uh, visit with Michigan State. You know, I want to go up there just to hang out, have a good time. But right. I, my mom was said, don't waste their time, AJ. It's not, don't do that. And so I right. canceled it. But guys already kind of know where they want to go. So that's, that's a heck of a story, man. Let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up with Bet Rivers yet, now the time. Bet River Sportsbook is offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one play through to turn your bonus into cash money. When you win at Bet River Sportsbook, they pay fast. And now it's even faster with rush pay instant approval for withdrawals. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable. With March Madness around the corner, there's never been a better time to give Bet River Sportsbooks a try. Go to betrivers.com today or download the Bet Rivers iOS app. Must be 21 years or older, gambling a problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Um, I'm going to this segment called Who's Your Team, man? It's the 10 questions that Indiana basketball players can answer. And the first question is, man, what's your favorite place to eat in Bloomington as a player when you were there? What's my favorite place to eat? To eat, eat you say? in Bloomington when you was a player. When you, oh, it was Bruce's Cafe. Bruce's Cafe. Shout out, a Bruce's lot, Cafe. A lot of people don't know about that. It was nope. on the west side. It was a little little dive for mm-hmm. Miss Pauline and her her <laughs> son and and husband and daughter in law. They ran this little shop, man. They had the. Mm-hmm. The best pastries, man. Every awesome. fresh, every single day. <laughs> every single day. <laughs> Shout out Bruce Cafe. What what dorm or apartment did you stay in as a freshman? McNutt. McNutt. All right. We I'll call it this. We call I'll it the Nut House. The Nut House. <laughs> yeah. I was Disco Frisco. Um, what? Who was your roommate in the dorm? My first year was Butch Carter. Okay. Uh, and then after that, I just I didn't have a roommate anymore. You know okay, we. So. You know, we we departed and uh, mm-hmm. and I was kind of on my own after that until my senior year. I I room with uh, a buddy who's my, one of my best friends today, a guy by the name of Matt Murphy, who okay. was a big time banker and graduated from the Bi- Kelly School of Business. So he was oh. my roommate my senior year off campus. Awesome. Who, who was the hardest teammate to guard in practice? Well, I don't know if there was there was a. A teammate that was hard to guard because coach said I never played defense anyway. So, <laughs> oh, he said that. He said about all of us. <laughs> he said I never played defense. So yeah, I think everybody was easy for me. I guess <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Coach, he is so consistent. Man. He is so consistent. In the Big Ten, who was your toughest matchup? I would have to say the Michigan State run uh, with mm. Magic and Greg Kelser. Oh, you was I forgot and, about that. Yeah. You know that that team was probably because Magic and I had roomed together the summer before uh, his sophomore run, and we were in the World Games in Russia, and mm-hmm. so we became very close. And so there was a lot of noise, you know, a lot of chatter about who was going to win. We knew we were going to play each other out in or had a chance to play each other out in the Far West Classic. We were mm-hmm. both in that in that tournament. And, you know, I was I was going at Magic and Russia oh, yeah. saying to hell, we're going we gonna to beat y'all three times next year. Right. Magic <laughs> was like, well, we're going to beat you guys three times. So <laughs> we, we played in, in Portland in the Far West Classic in the championship game. Mm-hmm. And – it was a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. They pulled it out at the end, so we walked off the floor. Magic said, well, I'm up 1-0. <laughs> so I said, all right, I'll see you in the Big Ten. Right. And first game was in in, in Michigan State, mm-hmm. I believe, that year. And I walked off the floor. He said, all right, I'm up 2-0. No. <laughs> so I said, well, hell, Uh-oh. you know, we'll, we'll get you in Indiana. Uh-huh. Well, he walked off the floor at Indiana. 
I'm up three. <laughs> to this That's day, like uh, I said, we were going to sweep y'all this year. Right. They wow. ended up winning the national title yeah, that year tough. with that team, and we won the NIT title. So, I mean, Damn. that team was a special you know, special team. And I mean, mm-hmm. Magic, you, what can you say? You can't say enough. I he's can't one, say nothing. Did he bring it up? Great. Did he bring it up to you when you saw you uh, in, in NBA circles? Oh, yeah. We always <laughs> chatted over the years. But <laughs> if bad. I'm starting my team, he's my point guard. Absolutely. He's my starting point guard without hey, that. No, you feel great about that. You competed. You was in the game with Magic. So um, what, what's your most memorable game, your personal most memorable game in an Indiana uniform? It was probably the 48 point performance at Illinois uh, because there was a lot of, a lot around that game. Uh, You know, we were fighting to get into the NIT. So we had to have the game number one Mm -hmm. and and coach was real irritated that particular game because the, uh, the big 10, you know, uh, first team, second team, all all big 10 had come out. Right mm-hmm. for that game, and I was put on second team All Big Ten, and Coach was <laughs> was was very irritated. I mean, it's and I've seen him irritated over the years, but he yeah. was upset because I was on second team All Big Ten. And, you know, I didn't, I yeah. really didn't give a shit about that. Right. <laughs> right, and but he he came that morning at breakfast and he threw the paper in my face, and I never read the paper about right. you know the mm-hmm. accolades and things of that nature that was going on with me. Mm-hmm. And he threw the paper in my face and said, read this. Mm-hmm. And I read it, you know, and it said, hey, Woody, second team all, <laughs> all, right. big, all big 10, which I'd been for three straight years. Wow. And oh, um, he said, this is not right. You know, he was he was mad because I wasn't on the first team all big 10. Mm-hmm. So that night I went out and I all I can say is the basketball gods was was in my in my on my jersey that day right. and it with my style of play and I couldn't miss my teammates were were special in getting me the ball and setting me up and all I had to do was put it in the hole and right. I ended up scoring 48 points and that Ooh. more than anything it parlayed us to the NIT tournament and and it's the first time in the history of the game because coach went on post game and he 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 just erupted you know right. like how the hell can this guy not be on first team all big 10 and mm-hmm. the next day they put me on first team no all they all didn't <laughs> no they didn't they had six <laughs> players <laughs> it's the first time in the history of the game that they put six players on all <laughs> on the first team all big 10 so oh, nice, now he got his way and you know it was a <laughs> special honor for me mm-hmm. and it I think more than anything was the game was special because we were able to get in the NIT and and eventually win the NIT championship. A heck of a story, man. Did you guys win at Purdue? We won we won in New York oh, in okay. the garden. We mm-hmm. beat Purdue at the buzzer. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, but you think about the all the teams that were in the, you know, you had Ohio State, mm-hmm. you know, yep. Clark Clark. And her, and those Williams. guys, you know, yep. I mean, it, you know, they, Calvin Ramsey, I mean, that team was loaded. Yeah. And then we played, I think we opened up the NIT at, at Texas Tech. And ironically, not coach ended up coaching at Texas Tech. Right, yeah. People think the Big Ten is loaded today. Of just a few names you mentioned, just in conversation, Greg Kelser, Magic, um, you think Herb Williams, Joe, Clark Joe, Kellogg, Joe Barry Carroll, Joe Barry Kevin Carroll, Kale, like, come on, Michael Kevin. Thompson. I mean, it goes on for days. <laughs> it ain't even close. I'm like, that's Rodney like, Lester. <laughs> <laughs> People just don't do research. I was like, no, I, was like, I know it's good, but that's right. those are all really first good. round draft picks. You just it's named, still right? good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still good today. But when you talk about them, that those are Hall of Fame names. You just named. yeah, it ain't. It's proven. So I just want to get that out there because everybody talking about how good the Big Ten is. is. Um, did you? What's your favorite Coach Knight memory as a player? You as a player? I don't probably. You know, probably. Uh, I, you know, Knight saw me. Coach saw me at my lowest my uh-huh. senior year uh, when I 
went down with back surgery. And it was the lowest part of my point of my career. But I saw him at his lowest too. Uh, because he thought my career was over with. Oh, yeah, with the injury. And he was he broke down, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it was the first time that I had ever seen coach, you know, vulnerable, you know, in mm-hmm. terms of a coach player relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, when he broke down, I was like, wow, you know, this guy, you know, he really cares, you know, about Mike Woodson and, and his future and and you know where he's come from. And you know, that's probably the probably the, the lowest I've ever seen coach, but it was it was a special time because I knew he was in my corner and he always knew I was there in his corner. So Absolutely. I I think that's what <clears throat> what developed a, a, a bond that that has lasted for forty years plus, Absolutely. man. So, who's, who's, your, who's your most underrated teammate at Indiana? Oh shit, underrated. I don't know. You know, I mean, there were a lot of players, uh, but uh, I don't know if I've ever had an underrated teammate okay. you know, mm-hmm. because I just thought all my teammates mm-hmm. they did and tried to do what was asked of them, man, you know, Mm -hmm. and coach was tough. He was demanding, you know, Mm -hmm. he expected a lot. And, you know, I just thought players tried to give him what he wanted, you know, you know, it might not have been that day Mm -hmm. where it worked out for you from, from a player standpoint. But, you know, I just thought, I thought everybody that played and I played with, you had to be special, man. Yeah. You had to be good. I I can't say underrated. You had to be good to, Got you. to be at that level and have and wear that uniform, man. And that's I mean, that's when I say of, when I say underrated, it's just more of it's so many so, so much so many talented guys on the squad that not all can get the accolades that the Mike Woodsons or the the Ray Tobers get. You know what I mean? And they just kind of they they're so consistent. They just cruise under the radar. And when I think of underrated for like Greg Graham, I thought always thought Greg Graham was extremely underrated for what he did for his teams back in those nineties. So that's well, that's kind know, of the angle back in the day. Again, you know, I look at mm-hmm. you know the. It's just hard for me to say, you know, yeah, who was sure. underrated, yeah. really, because <laughs> hell, I came in with five other All Americans, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn. And they were great. They were, they were all great players, man. Yeah, like, that's so. crazy, man. The final question of the Hoosier Ten, man. Over the years, you got so many years, so many players. Who are your five favorite play IU players to watch play? Well, again, you know, Isaiah, you know, is probably one of my favorites, you know, mm-hmm. because I watched that young man come in and I was like, damn, what's what's the hype? You know, what, right, yeah. you, know <laughs> you know, who the hell is this little guy? Mm-hmm. He and, came, you, know, you played with him in the Pan Am game. Yeah. Right? And that's where. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's so he, he tried out for the Pan Am team against all the great college players and all the great top point guards. Mm hmm. And I'm sitting in the field house over here, and I'm like, who the hell is this kid? <laughs> right. And, I mean, he ran, ran through that camp like he owned the camp. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, wow. Right. This guy here is pretty special. And and it held true. You know, I mean, Isaiah's had a career like no other Absolutely. You know, player that's played here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Big Mac has got to be mm-hmm. – <laughs> So we ain't get a chance to see Big Mac. Yeah, well, I did. You know, he's got to be at the top, man. Absolutely. Big George was, I mean, a man child when it came to, mm-hmm. you know, dominating his position. I mean, right. his whole career right. yeah. was that way. And yeah. uh, I've always looked up to Big Mac, you know, and the fact that he came from Indiana, it was, was special. Mm-hmm. Wayne, Wayne Rafford, yes, you sir. know, probably – you know, being my best friend for 48 years. And when I say we never had a hiccup, man, we never did. Good guy, um, was special for me because, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, he he's the guy that jump started me. So <laughs> I put him right, you know, in that in that category. Oh. Randy Whitman, you know, Randy Whitman. who 
who's who was right there as well. Yeah, um, yeah one more, one more. And I don't know, probably, I, probably Grunwald because I I say right. Glenn because when Glenn came in, a lot of people don't know about Grunwald. Grunwald to me w was and and maybe Larry Bird ain't the word to to, to throw out there because Larry Bird when I'm starting mm -hmm. my team. Larry Bird's on my first team. Right. Yeah. Team. Oh, everything, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, I agree. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm a Larry and Bird I'm a fan. Big, I'm a big Larry Bird fan. Yeah. But Grunwall had overtones like Larry. Mm -hmm. You know, he could pass, he could shoot, but his knees just wouldn't allow him to yeah. play, man. And, mm -hmm. and it's a shame because the Indiana fans, Hoosier Nation, really never got to see a guy yeah. who I thought could really, really be a great player, man. Right. So Grunwald's that other guy, man, because I've just had so much respect and, and love for Grunwald over the years, man. And, and that's crazy because you could have, you could have possibly been on the front court with Larry Bird, huh? Yeah, that yeah. would have been a that would have oh been a beautiful God. if he had kept his ass right here in Indiana. Right. Would have been. <laughs> oh my! God. I would have been riding his coattail for two years. Boy, that, that's, boy, that's three. That's three national championships minimum. Like that's yeah. You might have yeah. slipped up in one. Somebody might have got you. But that's three. But anyway, back to uh, man, that's it. Concludes who's your ten? That was excellent, man. Uh, you get to IU. You, you I mean you 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 have a seamless transition to IU. Eighteen eight coming out the gate as a freshman, man. But every every guy I've had on the show, man, we always joke. Was there that moment that came where you actually was like, all right, man, Coach Knight, this will he a little bit much. I'm about I'm gonna try to get up out of here. I might have to leave. I might have to transfer. Did you no, ever I, have that moment? No, I had I had a you know my freshman year you know I only weighed a buck eighty five yeah mm -hmm. playing small forward and <laughs> I could never keep anybody off the boards right so coach told me early on you know I kept missing blockouts and coach was like damn it you miss one more blockout you're gonna run them stairs until I get tired and sure enough I missed a blockout right. so mm -hmm. there I go up. I run up the, <laughs> all the way to the top, walk all the way down. And uh -huh. this and this was going on for about an hour. And I was like, man, wait, wait, wait did I come to IU for this? But at the end of the day, I was driven, man. You right, know, I right. knew what I wanted. She, so he hollers up. He says, well, I guess I got to put up with your ass for another three years. <laughs> right. Get on down here. <laughs> and I came down and still had to finish two more hours of practice. You yeah, know, for practice sure. Was three hours back then. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I don't I know. That, you know, you you always when you're going through the grind, man. Right. You, yeah. you know, you always are thinking, damn, what the hell have <laughs> I gotten myself into? But right. Yeah. Day, hey, look, I wasn't going anywhere. It was all worth it. Right. Definitely. Definitely. And you. Take us back to your 1980 team, uh, which is which is a team that could have won a national championship with Ray Tolbert, Zeke, Randy. Like you had all the tools. Sweet 16 round, Big Ten championship. You were, I think, you were injured throughout that season a little bit. You came back at the end, man. What what well, what ended up? Uh, how was that season? And take the fans back to that moment. Oh, it was. You know, coming into that season, I had so much at as, as stake as a, a pl as a player from an individual standpoint. And again, I'm not individually driven. You know, right? Yeah, no, never. You know, we had built that coach had put that team together coming out of my junior year. You know, after winning the NIT championship, mm -hmm. and then going to the Pan Am Pan Am Games that summer and winning the gold medal. Everything was set coming right. into my senior year. Uh -huh. You know, we got this little guard out of Chicago, Isaiah, who's, you know, probably the missing piece. Uh -huh. And we come back into that year ranked number one. And I think really the rankings fell in place because, you know, the Russian team come over every year and tour and play the top 10 schools in, in the country. And they walked through us every year that right. I was at Indiana. My friend, I mean, we didn't come within 20 points and beat this team. <laughs> right, it was good. It was like a man, a, a man's team amongst little boys. Right. My mm. senior year, we beat them by 20. Mm. And they walked away saying that's the best team. In and I thought we were because I thought every position was yeah. stacked. You yeah. had. Yeah. I mean, if somebody went down, the next guy was in line. Mm. Yeah, but but. I never thought I would go down. 
Right, yeah, yeah. And that was a killer. I never thought Randy Whitman would go down. Oh, he both of you guys went down in that season? He, yeah, he broke yeah. his foot. I went oh. down with back surgery. Right. I came back. He never returned. Oh, wow. And okay. I came back in the, in the latter part of that Big Ten season with six to go. And, again, you know, there's something special, you know, a little higher than Mike Woodson and, Right. That was able to get me in position. I had a hell of a doctor and, and Dr. Foyer who performed the surgery. And then I had great people that rehabbed me to get me back, like Doc Councilman and, mm -hmm. and Bob Young, guys like that who were able to get me back within eight weeks. And and uh, we made the last six six game run, which we we won all six and was able to beat Ohio State, you know, mm -hmm. for the title in front of our our fans, the last Big Ten game. So, I mean, you know, we got as much out of that out of out of that team that year. Uh, but again, I didn't get to the big dance. You know, the big dance was in Indianapolis on my birthday. Oh, really? I mean, everything was just it was <laughs> set, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. So that was the probably the most disheartening mm. heartening thing of my senior year because we weren't able to get to the big dance. Awesome, man. And, and and you talked early about your relationship with Coach, man. When your career was over, you know, talk tell the people how how playing for Coach Knight changed you and matured you, and and what has been the biggest impact he's had on you as a coach. Well, I mean, there's no doubt. I think the one thing that you you learn playing for Coach Knight when you go through the system, mm -hmm. you learn to work. And you learn to appreciate work. And, and and it's not always easy. You know, there's a lot of roller coaster rides along the yeah. way yeah. that, you know, you that you got to deal with. Right. And and I sure surely had them, you know, my four years here. But when I left here, I knew I was ready for the NBA. Right. You know, my you know, even though I was coming off of back surgery and I had to physically get myself back, but mentally. I knew I was ready. I was tough enough based on what I experienced the four years here. And it just prepared me for every walk of life that I walked into from a business standpoint, um, from a basketball standpoint. And then once I ventured out to, to start coaching, it just, I was just, I've, I've been driven, man. Right, and, yeah. and Knight has a lot to, had a lot to do with that. Yeah. You started, you know, <clears throat> obviously the same impact coaches had on me and on the rest of us. Um, and he is to be commended for that, man. Discipline, accountability, you know, just, um, just understanding the intricacies of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, man. Um, I, I wouldn't be the player that I was and the coach that I became and uh, the mentor that I became without Coach Knight. So uh, I share those def those sentiments with you. Uh, you, and it, here's a Question that a lot of people want to ask as we go into the final segment, man. You've been coaching in NBA since 1996, uh, is what I saw. And what would make you, because a lot of coaches would be like, you out your mind. What would make you want to, you know, at this time, even though it's your alma mater, come back into the college ranks where, you know, it's going to be you know, a little bit more of a spotlight on you. You're going to have to make recruiting phone calls, all this extra stuff that, and you was just cruising and chilling as assistant coach in a, in a successful New York uh, program that had, that, that had been starving to win for years and was beginning to win. What went into that decision to return to our alma mater? <clears throat> well, you know, I, I've been so driven, man, you know, and, I've had success and I've had failures as a mm -hmm. coach. You know, it's a part of the business if you if you coach it. I don't care what level, who you coach, what sport it is, mm -hmm. you're gonna have ups and downs. And and I've had my fair shares, but the one thing I've I've tried to value is that I will never let the downs outweigh my ups. Never. Right. Never. Because I've had so many ups in my career. And to be able to coach, win an NBA title, uh, mm -hmm. be coach of the month. And, right, yeah. and, you know, I mean, just, you know, there's been a lot of things that's come along with coaching. I've won and they've taken my job from me. 
mm-hmm. as a coach. Yeah. And that's probably driven me even more. Uh, and to be able to circle back, you know, yeah. I mean, this has always been in the back of my mind and coming okay. back to Indiana. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, it, it, timing had a lot to do with it. You know, yeah. putting the right pieces in place probably had a lot to do with somebody believing in Mike Woodson. Right, that right. probably meant more to me than anything. You know, it wasn't right. just me wanting to come. I wanted somebody to believe that I could get the job done. And right. Scott Dawson, you know, he believed. He gave, he gave me the opportunity to sit down with him. Um, uh, President McRobbery, after talking with him, he believed. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a lot of support and cast here in, in Bloomington, you know, right. and they know who they are, you know, that had a lot to do with me coming back. Uh, the Buckners, the Mays, the yeah. Fergus. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that's been in my corner, the, the Cooks, all, all these years, man. And so to be able to circle back, AJ, is, is like a dream come true, true, true. And knowing that there's a lot of work just got to be done, you know. Yeah but I'm so driven, you know, so I'm going to put my best foot forward and try to get this program back on top. And so we can all spend time together, you know, bring back the old guys because again, without them, I wouldn't be sitting in this seat today Mm -hmm. and, and see if we can do this thing together. When you finally got that call from Scott, that you're the guy before, I know you had to call the wife to, to get, you know, to get some, Mission, time, you know, you had to see what if it's good, can we make this transition? But after that, what were the, the, the initial thoughts that went through your mind? Did you immediately feel the weight of uh, are you tradition on your shoulders, or like what was the what went through your mind when you got that call that it was official? Well, it, it was a, a, a call of re- rejoice, it was a call of uh, happiness, uh, knowing that there's a lot of work, man, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot that you know. I know there's a lot of support out there in, in Hoosier Nation, man. And man, all I want to do is it's not. It's never been about me, man. I want to bring a team here that Nick Nation loves seeing compete. Mm-hmm. And and if I can put twelve to fifteen players on a roster that loves competition and loves to compete, man. Mm-hmm. then I know we'll have a shot at winning. You know, that's that's what's driving me right now. And right. what better place to do it in, in the state of Indiana where you grew up and you made your name and do it in front of the greatest fans, you know, that's ever graced the college floor. So mm-hmm. uh, that's that's why I'm back. And, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That's all I can tell you. Hey, man, first, I was more excited than you because I think I've been advocating, like, you know, my voice is a small voice, but I've been waiting on an opportunity for one of you guys to take over the program. It's probably since Kelvin Sampson was was let go. I started thinking about that because of the tradition. I start to see the it's just a little bit of slippage. You know, who's a nation is who's a nation, man. It's going to be what it is. I said, but it's going to take a guy who really passionate and understands what – it all entails in totality to start that process back, man. So when I got that call that you were selected, man, <clears throat> I felt like I felt the weight come off. Like I was like, okay, I can I can breathe again and watch. You know, well, well I appreciate that. that I did. I really did. I'm not saying that just to toot you, man. I, I've been right care who it was. I was like, it has to be somebody that from Indiana that understands it all. And, and cares about reuniting because I always felt like it was a, uh, it was it, and it wasn't purposely done, but we were kind of separated. It was Samson guys, Mike Davis guys, it was Coach Knight guys, and then I now it's Coach Miller guys. But I think you're the guy that 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 brings it all together, man. It makes everybody feel like an Indiana Hoosier instead of a night uh, instead of a somebody's guy. So it, it's a well, thank it's, you. That's awful nice of you. Thank you. you. Lastly, man, before I let you get out of here, man. You've been on campus for a month and a half now. Um, what have you seen 
uh, uh, that uh, the, that you need to uh, start to really focus on to get Indiana basketball back uh, on the floor to where we need to be. You got you was able to get TJD back. He was able to get Race back. He was able to get a lot of key components and add some awesome components. Miller Cop, who I know because I was coaching at Northwestern, and he was coming in, so I know what he's capable of. Um, and Bates, uh, you got a good recruit. And with all with that, with those pieces. What do you see uh, was the next step for, for those guys? To, to well, I, you know, I think as I navigate through, you know, uh, where I started a month and a half ago and to where I am now is is getting everybody under one umbrella and and talking about the do's and the don'ts and how, yep. how are we going to try to get Indiana University basketball back on top? That's important to me because I feel like everybody, you know, I think I've assembled a great staff and everybody's got to be on the same page and the players have got to know that. Right. And uh, I think when you put a team together, uh, you got to make sure not only are you prepared that they're prepared every time they step out on the floor, right. uh, maybe practice or a game. And so those are, those are the only things that I'm thinking about right now yeah. in how these players are going to accept my coaching and, and and how quickly they are able to pick up things that I'm going to throw at them. Uh, because I'm a, I'm a demanding guy. I'm, you know, I, I want to win and I want them to experience winning because I know if they do, it, it would be nothing like they've ever seen in their life here at Indiana University because it's, it's special, you know, and that's what, you know, young players don't understand today, but if you wear that IU uniform, you're going to know how special it is because I'm going to push you along with my staff to get back to the top. Well, when I text Scott Dawson and, and said my piece about the coach, I said I need, we need somebody that's going to galvanize the fan base, a former player. And I didn't know which one he was going to pick, but he picked you. And, and you've done just that. You've galvanized a fan base, and you're going to put a team out there that's going to start the process of getting Indiana back on top, man. So I'm looking forward to it. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to join the House of Hoosier podcast, man. Uh, fans are going to really be excited to hear from you and, 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 and see our interaction as former players. And uh, we want to wish you nothing but the best, man. If you ever need anything from AJ Guyton, please let me know. You know, uh, you got my number now. You got everything, everything you need. So we support you and we're behind you 100%, brother. Thank you, my brother. It goes both ways, man. Love you guys. I'll Take care, you. man. I'll see you soon, man. Okay. <laughs>